Welcome. My name is Penelope Chatterton. Welcome to Awaken the Dream. My friends, it's a special day for me. It's April 7th. Um, I wanted to dedicate this program today to David Albert Bennett, my late husband. And I always like to remember him as I email my kids and we talk about what a wonderful guy he was. And I like to applaud his memory and give thanks for the time we had together. Today, I'm gonna to talk again about Joel Goldsmith. This book, Realization of, of Oneness, is very powerful. I always think after I finish a book, I got it all under my belt, but I don't. Which is why it's exciting. This man, Joel Goldsmith, wrote over 40 books and has apparently 1,200 hours of tapes that are available for folks to listen to. And um, actually, Chris Bentley, who's lower thirds, the iwstudents.webs.net, has all kinds of ways to get in touch with his books, his tapes, with Chris, who is a wonderfully strong advocate of the Infinite Way movement which after Joel's 72 years of life, he went from Christian science practitioner, finding that being organized and advertising spiritual principles was not for him. So it's not as though he went undercover, but he became someone who was interested in creating a movement and it became the infinite way, which by the way today is more exciting and prominent than ever before, before his lifetime. All the folks today that are spiritually doing their own path depend on Joel's work like I do. He is my mentor. Um, I have some Christian science in the background, some organized religion that just brought me to Joel. It's, um, he happened to me the way I really felt it was supposed to happen. So let's get on with this program and let's realize oneness together. All right, we start, and this is a long book with many chapters, but he talks about, in the beginning, God being pure being. And what's nice about that is he talks about before Jesus came along and in the old dark days, people were negative. Um, they were very human. They felt God was responsible for everything that went wrong. Uh, their birth, their death, uh, God took me home, I'm sick, it's God's fault. Um, it was very interesting that today we do that too. Uh, doesn't mean it's right, but it's good to talk about the fact that that's an easy place to go. It's like, gosh, take it off me, it must be God. But when Jesus came along, Jesus Christ, he um, brought a light to that. He, he just presented the, the, the actually he was a, he's part of the Infinite Way movement and that he really helped teach how pure God was. He was not responsible for anything that goes on in the human scene. Now he was also, well, he said his words would never go away. And we can talk a lot more about what Jesus did share in this program, but he is a mighty master like Buddha and like revelators that have come and that frankly are, are part of the Infinite Way movement. And they speak our language when they speak to us. They are very present. We have to realize them. So getting back to the human scene, uh, what is so gracious about the realization of oneness is that Joel helps us with that not only are we mesmerized, hypnotized, we're tempted by the human scene. We see it as we're victims to it. And there's so much compassion from Joel about the fact that we wake up to it, that none of us are free from what we have brought, what if we take on, what is literally swimming around and we end up with, that's just part of being here, part of being a human being and being in these two worlds of fear and the law of God, which is pure being, which doesn't know anything about the negativity of the human scene. It is not responsible. If you call on God and you pray to him to do something for you, he can't because he's already doing it. He's doing everything. So the beauty of the realization of oneness is not only the compassion for how all of us are dealing with mesmerism, uh, the antichrist, the temptation, all the, the sin, the death, the, the diseases, all of us are inundated with what we think is going on with all of that. 
We have opinions about it. We have medicines for it. We have, oh my gosh, if your mother had it, you're next. I mean, we all live in this, what has been passed down to us as enormous fear. And so thank you, Joel, for saying that because it helps me to work harder on dissipating at that and dissolving it by knowledge. So the knowledge of being is God is pure. He gave us life. He is the infinite creative principle of this entire universe. We are, we came from that invisible spirit. We will return to that invisible spirit. We will never die because we were never born and there is no death. So we just are. Joel often says God is, he's ising, he's here, he's within us and because we are his creations, everything that God has is ours. Now the point is how do we manifest those gifts of perfection, perfect health, joy, giving love everywhere, serving our neighbor. How can we do that? So let me see if I can help you with that, with Joel's help. First of all, we live here. And so to get there, we have to first of all know that in true knowledge, none of this is real. None of the human experience is the law. The only law there is, is God is omnipotent. He is the only power. God is omnipresent. He is the only presence and omniscience. He's the only wisdom. If you heard somebody who you were just thought was the most intelligent person in the world, you can go beyond that because God has what you need. He knows everything about you, what you need, and he can't wait to give you his kingdom. It's there. It's waiting for you. Now, here's the trick. How do you get it again? We mentioned that before. We'll mention it again. You have to consciously realize and take responsibility for this. Yeah, your prayers, if you pray to God, they can't be answered because everything's in place for you. They've already been answered. If you give him a list, you're not giving him credit for having done everything he can for you. So what the trick is, how do you dismiss and dissolve a plane that is so loaded and so within, I mean, you're so mesmerized. It's like a mirage in a desert. I mean, you see all these illusions and it's like you have to figure out what the illusion is and you have to not fall for it. So you have to be on deck, at work and conscious. All right, we're gonna be conscious. We're gonna work at this. We're gonna practice. Practice, 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 Joel says. Be in the moment. Listen, the punchline is always the still small voice is the only prayer there is. Just think about that for a minute. That is just sums up the whole program and the whole the book, the realization of oneness. The only prayer is the still small voice. So to be available to hear, we have to pause frequently. We have to meditate often. We have to become a vacuum. We have to be empty. Now that's not an easy trick when we have a planet that's multitasking and all this energy is flowing around us and we have to find a way to cut through all of that and that is the art of the infinite way where all those masters, those revelators, Jesus, Buddha, in our language will speak to us but we have to do the work of opening up. So again, Thank you, Joel, for that head slap. It's like, okay, if it's not, if it's, if my outward expression is not what I want it to look like, then, and, and if it's what I think I've made up or someone told me it was supposed to look like, I'm still not going to the still small voice. And that's what we have to do in this program. I keep saying that over and over. All right, the only prayer there is, we got that. So now, Jesus said, get, get behind me, Satan. He said no to illusion. He said no to appearances. And that we have to be on the ball. And the only way we're really gonna get good at that is again, practice, practice, practice. And you know, why would we practice? I, I think we practice to the degree that we need to practice. For me, it's, it's the only path I have because it just fits. It makes me happy, it makes me peaceful, it makes me joyful. And it forgives me as I, actually to the degree you forgive is to the degree that you have the kingdom. 
because the worst neighbor you've got is the Son of God. Now here's another thing about manifesting. All your neighbors are you. You don't want to be a malpractitioner and project onto someone who they aren't. They are the Son of God, period. Now, they come certainly in their human vibration. They may not be aware of that, but that doesn't matter. The work you're doing, let's say you want to be a practitioner. Let's say someone comes to you with an illusion. You have to play the game of, okay, I'll help you, but even you know that that person has got to realize for himself, but you know, we do concessions when we work in the two planes of the two powers. Sometimes we have to fake it for ourselves. We keep it in secret. We keep it private that, okay, I'm going to dispel the disease or the limitation or the lack because it isn't real. It doesn't have any energy. It's got no law to support it. Nothing. It is nothingness, which is a Joel term, which is wonderful. Things, illusions are nothingness. We impersonalize them. We don't take things personally. We understand it is not what it looks like. It's a mirage. So again, we're, sti we're, we're still working on getting in touch with that still small voice. So our teachers, sometimes our biggest teachers are the roughest folks in our lives that, are, that push our buttons, that upset us, that, that we think we know more or we want to talk about them. We want to put them in a category. Well, that's not going to serve us. That is not going to open the path to the riches that God has in mind for us. He wants you to have everything because he gave you everything. You have it all. He cannot answer a prayer because they're all answered. Everything's in place for you. He knows you. You are the individual expression of God. Now, let me talk more about that. Your individualized instruments. Each one of you has a mission, has something to do here that is just you. You have a talent for it, you have a capacity for it, you have a willingness for it, you have a joy in doing it. Again, don't let your neighbors tell you who you are or a group or let's say you're in, let's say you're a, an adolescent and all, everybody in your class wears the same clothes and they speak the same language. I mean, we, we can chuckle at that because we've all done it. But as you get older, you begin to realize that I am a person that listens to the voice for God and I'm an individual, I'm passionate, I'm creative and I'm very innovative. And I want to be inspired with everything that I do here. I don't want to be dead to myself. I don't want to repeat patterns, show up for the paycheck. I want to be alive. And so God has given each one of us as instruments, individual expressions of God. This vortex of amazing energy that's beyond words. God is not in the human scene. Joel says it's blasphemy to think that we can blame God for anything going on here because he's got nothing to do with it. Adam and Eve left the Garden of Eden. They decided to see good and evil. So yes, even good, which is so fascinating, even good stuff is not what being in the kingdom is, not getting credit, not being, not having your will get what you want or be proud of an ambition. I mean, yes, those things are nice, but really, we go beyond that. There's more for us than a pat on the back. And I do know this with all the work that we do, cutting through this pretty incredible scene here, we take all of that with us for sure. In our individual expression, you know, I see all the stages of my life, like pink periods, blue periods, marriage periods, raising kids periods. And sometimes we end up with a period where it's finally our time to you know, hone in more on who we are and what makes us happy. And usually that's given to us. I think life happens to us, especially as instruments. Once we get on the path, there's no getting off it. I mean, you can get on any path you want. If it's a spiritual path, I've been on a lot of them to get to the infinite way. And they're all wonderful. They all fed me. For the, for the moment that I was with them, I was inspired and excited and it worked. And then I just kept moving on and other things happened where I needed more. I needed more simplicity. 
I didn't want to go to a healer who wanted to overcome something that wasn't there. Now that's a form of healing that's on this plane. You can be slain in the spirit. You can have a disease that someone can say, I'm going to overcome that, but they recognize it as a disease. Now, infinite way folks have to go past and beyond a lot of the healing that we've heard being done, which has been wonderful and a step in the right direction. Infinite way folks have to be simple. There's only one prayer. There's only one law that supports us. There's one mind. There's one presence. There's one power. And you know, it's so simple. I think it's those simple things that get beyond us because it's too easy. But it gets easier as you study, as you study, as you meditate, as you practice, practice, practice. It gets to be very exciting because your outer starts to change. So your outer life, the outpicturing of your life, which jar, um, God is in charge of, let him happen to you. Let him occur in your thoughts. Empty out your mind. Mind is conditioned in the human scene. There's unconditioned infinity waiting for you. There's immortality. There's the resurrection. There's eternal life. That's real. Jesus taught us all about that. He said, if I put my, the temple of my body down, it will rise in three days. That goes for all of us. We are home now. We never left the Garden of Eden. We just thought we'd take a trip. We'd take a little walk. Well, we walked into quite an interesting situation here. This is like a dream. The human scene is like a very strange dream, but again, I, the comfort I got from, don't blame yourself, don't blame anybody else. Another point, when you see someone lost, you know, if you see someone that absolutely doesn't want to hear from you, let's say you're battling another stage of your spiritual growth and you're going back and forth between faith and being blind, um, and someone picks on you, well, you learn the lesson, don't put your pearl out there unless, unless somebody either asks you or comes to you for it, because they will. Don't put it out there where it doesn't belong. Keep it in secret, which is a huge concept of the infinite way. The secret within is sacred. You can be in the presence of that person attacking you and secretly and sacredly and silently give him the love he is looking for. It's not about you. Always remember, friends, any relationship, anything that you think has a power is your mirror. What you see is who you think you are. So if you find yourself pounding someone, just say, I'm in malpractice. Uh-oh. Time to turn that around. Malpractice is a boomerang. It goes out. It blames. It finds people at fault, and it comes right back on the sender. The person doesn't get it. You get it. You, your whole world is within you. It's all there. It's all yours. So you must forgive yourself if you start to get tempted to judge someone who doesn't think as much as you do about spiritual principles. Everybody is exactly where they need to be. This is profound for me, and I love hearing it because it helps. You're not here to change a soul. You're not here to tell anybody to change their mind. They have to either ask you and show humility or find you because they want to and they do. They find, they hear, maybe they'll see a show, maybe they'll see something that you've done in the world of art, science, my goodness, that's another thing. Joel was talking about when we all went through that depression. The United States became very innovative. Instead of taking from one another or trying to repeat the problem, folks came out to do new studies in science, literature, art, all for the peace and good of mankind. That was coming from God. They don't have to be spiritual teachers. But they change the planet because they dare to step out, be original, be innovative, and be themselves instead of saying, oh, I'm going to moan and groan with what's happening in this, in this terrible period of depression. I'm going to make it better. And it's often when we do find ourselves with a disease or a lack or a bad partner that it's not so much the limitation, it's the incentive to go within and say, oh, my gosh, because you know what? We all have the same cause. We all come from the same divine principle of we're created whole, perfect, and complete. 
So we go, that cause will eliminate all those areas of things that can go wrong. It doesn't matter what it looks like out, out picturing. You have to go to the cause. You have to be in the invisible plane. You have to be sacred. You have to be silent. And you have to go to work and be conscious. It's up to you. Okay, back to the drawing board. I sound like the truant officer today. You gotta go to work. And by that, you will go to work. And it's not because I'm telling you to go to work, or Joel is, but you know, you kind of have to. If you find you're uncomfortable and you're dealing with fear, it's a rough place to be. You can't t put on the news very comfortably and even want to hear it. And it's not as though you have to be ignorant. One of the gifts of the realization of oneness is when you finally get it, you find this peace. You find it because you now have total responsibility for giving it away. You find a mission. You find a way to help this planet. It doesn't matter if it's feeding the hungry, if it's doing anything overseas, if it's signing up for something. You find your life is total service. It becomes a service to mankind. You make it better. That's almost the end result of being complete in your omnipotence, your omnipresence, uh, your all, all power. Once you sort of see the nothingness, the impersonalization of this plane, and you move to the sea of forgiveness, and you float on the sea of infinity. I love that expression, floating on the sea of infinity, of the everlasting arms, the peace that's always there. So as you can see, friends, you've got to meditate to get to that place. You've got to empty out your mind. Mind is conditioned. Infinity is unconditioned. It's unconditional love, which when you serve your neighbor, when you really get it that you are here, I and my father are one, so all my neighbors are me. For me to feel full and complete, self-complete, I need to be there for the world in whatever talent, capacity that I have, that I've been given. Believe me, they grow. Those talents, the capacities, the talents grow as you stone by stone work day and night quietly. I mean, they say don't storm the kingdom. That Just work and have patience. Have patience, of which I have little. Try to have patience with your growth. It will come with persistence, with showing up, with doing the job, and you will find that your talents, your capacity, and your willingness and your advantages to give are going to be given to you. That will open up for you. That's what happens to you. I love the fact that we get these head slaps. God knows our needs. He knows how to use us. Again, in my last five minutes, I want to talk about us being instruments, transparencies. You know, he talks about the birth of children and the death of people on this plane. If we believe in birth and we see death, yes, we see separation, we do. But he talks too in this book about the only parent there is, is God, the Father. Can you imagine thinking about all your brothers and sisters of being your relatives? Well, I guess they are. I mean, it's nice to be a transparency, it's nice to be a parent, but you know, it's also very helpful to know that if God is the ultimate parent to my own child, then uh, what is best for my children will come to them as they open up. I cannot, and this is such a test for many parents, change my kids often, nor do they want to hear it. So it's best to accept them and have faith knowing that it's not blind faith, it's reality. They too must be seen as whole, complete, and perfect, no matter what stages they are in. They're a great test for parents. Let them go. Do what you can. Be, um, well, you could be a good example to them about what makes life work and what gives you joy and what gives you peace. So, we walk on this, the straight, the, what, what did Jesus say? The, the, the gate is narrow, straight is the way. The gate is narrow to eternal life, but so few do it, can do it. To me, that's very, very real. So few can find this path. The gate is narrow, the, the path is narrow, the gate is straight. All right, focus. It means we have got to grow. Be patient and kind to ourselves when we get off the path, which is all the time. 
always falling off it, getting back on it. You go between faith, you go between fear. You know, the second phase, he was talking about the first phase of your spiritual growth actually is you see you die more daily and you see your life getting better, your health, your relationships starting to improve. You go to the second phase where you're still wrestling with the two powers where, whoops, you took the medicine you really didn't need or you fell for something that somebody said and you put your foot in your mouth um, and then you go back to who you really are because you've got your work going. And that's a long period, Joel says, on your spiritual journey. And guess what the third step is, is grace. You live by grace totally. Living by grace is not living by going to sleep. Living by grace is a very active, loving force that spoon feeds you every second of every day what you're to say, what you're to do. The guidance from within is phenomenal. I don't know how I can say it any other way. It can get you laughing. It can get you giving thanks. It's, it's better than magic. It's like, oh my gosh, did I need to, was I directed in the right direction? Did I say the right thing? Because I've been fed. You're not alone. And by the way, only you can do this. There's no husband, children, family, friends, church, synagogue. None of those can give you what you really have to do on your own alone because you're not alone. You've got to be fed within, which requires you in your meditation have to be alone in that. You can be sitting with a group of meditators, no problem there, but the work is yours. And it's exciting because then you realize I am an instrument, I have an assignment, I have a talent, I have a capacity, I want it to get better. I want to be more courageous, more passionate about what I know. I want to not be afraid of judgment. Gosh, I'm down to one minute, folks. I'm really excited. This book has given me so many gifts. Uh, Joel, 20th century mystic, He's on everybody's shopping list. He's pretty phenomenal. Thank you, Joel, for what you've given me in your lectures, your books, your inspiration, because you went out on a limb. You decided, I don't want to be advertised. I don't want recognition. I don't want to pull anything. I don't want to organize anything to say we have a movement. His movement is invisible. It's sacred. It's secret. We all can share it on our own. We can go to those websites. We can go to Chris Bentley's website. We can get information there. We can inspire each other. But it's a great, great movement, a great, great teaching. And I just thank you so much today. I want to thank Jamie Horton for directing and for Eric Adel for being all-purpose person <laughs> and for um, Paula Kersey for helping us out. This is a very special place to be. And thank you, David Bennett, for being in my life. I miss you and love you still. Thank you, my friends, for joining me on Awaken the Dream. Talk to you again soon.